we'll continue our studies on stem cells here in this session we'll be studying about the blood cells blood cells blood cells are also known as hematocytes hemocytes or hem hematopoietic cells and these are mainly produced by the bloods and synthesized primarily by the red bone marrow here you can see a bone marrow which contains a hemopoietic stem cells where further they differentiate into myelin progenitor cells and lymphoid cells and these contain a Myelid progenitor cells contain a platelets, eosinophils, basophils, neutrophils, monocytes and erythrocytes but lymphoid progenitor cells contains only a beta, B, B cell and T cells. Here another chart wise exp, uh, explanation you can see your hemopoietic stem cells and myelids myelid cells and lymphoid progenitor and further they are classified into megakaryocyte then platelets that is thrombocytes and erythrocyte mast cells my myeloblast and myeloblast is further classified into basophils neutrophils eosinophils and monocytes and common lymphoid progenitor cells are natural killer cells and small lymphocytes are T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes and the plasma cell. The main role of blood cells is to transport the oxygen throughout the body and to protect the body against the antigen and to restore the tissues in the body like these are erythrocytes basophils lymphocyte monocytes are further classified into dendritic cell and macrophages eosinophil and neutrophil now we came to know what are blood cells now we'll know how to identify the blood cells so presence or the absence of the nucleus whether the blood cells contain the nucleus or not by that we can identify the blood cell and there will be a certain granules present inside the cells blood cells depending upon that also you can identify the blood cells and depending upon the cell size their nuclear size shape all these things criteria play a very important role in differentiating or identifying the blood cells so another type of way how do you find out it is a blood cell is by a staining technique the staining techniques like Lishman stain and May Grunwald Jimsa stain and along with the combination of acidic and basic dye will differentially stain the granules cytoplasm nucleus of various blood cells so that it will be easy to differentiate or it will be easy to identify the different types of blood cells here you can see that this is a differential staining of the blood cells and here you can see that the rbc's RBCs are red in color and these are monocytes and neutrophils. These are also colored like red. here you can see a chart where red blood cells and monocytes cytoplasm orange pink to rose. Okay, these are the RBCs and cytoplasm pale gray blue nucleus deep bluish color pale gray blue nucleus pale this is the gray blue nucleus deep purplish color where the cytoplasm are being colored and these are called as monocytes and lymphocytes when we do a differential staining lymphocytes that is cytoplasm and nucleus will be light blue and deep violet color and neutrophils like PMN and polys granules will be purple to lilac and cytoplasm will be quite pink in color eosinophils undergo a color of orange to pink and basophils in a differential staining they will be deep blue color and platelets will form a red purple surrounding by the light blue color this are the different colors which are being uh, taken by the cells okay 
here you can see a different types of blood cells and their structure and as well as their function red blood cells which is about 6.5 to 8.5 meter in diameter which are biconcave disc like shape which do not contain any of the nucleus the main function is to transport the oxygen throughout the body and white blood cells these are spherical with nucleus and they are further classified into granulocytes and agranulocytes and these granulocytes they contain a neutrophil where where the nucleus is four lobed structure where they are linked by a thin filament here you can see which is 10 to 12 micrometer in diameter and this also phagocytizes the microorganisms basophils are 10 to 12 micrometer in diameter and these actually have a cytoplasmic granules and a in indistinct lobes here you can see uh, indistinct lobes are there, the nucleus, and releases a histamine which promotes the inflammation. When there is an infection, there might be a chances of inflammation which is caused by the basophils. And coming on to the eosinophils, which are 11 to 14 micrometer in diameter, they contain a nucleus which are bilobed. Here you can see a uh, lobes which are two, therefore it is called as a bilobed and the granules are stained orange and whenever there is allergic reaction there will be increase in the eosinophil A granulocytes like lymphocyte these are round nucleus which is 6 to 14 micrometer in diameter and these are helpful whenever there is an allergic reaction they will be produced in larger amount means more of them is produced and coming on to the monocytes these are 12 to 20 micrometer in diameters and the nucleus round kidney shaped or horseshoe shaped nucleus are being found and contains more cytoplasm than the lymphocyte than the lymphocyte more amount of cytoplasm can be seen here it also undergoes a phagocytosis where it kills the microorganism by eating it it is called as a phagocytosis and platelet cell fragments surrounding by the plasma membrane and containing a granules these contain the granules and it is of 2 to 4 micrometer and diameters and these are necessary for the blood clotting purposes. So till now we have covered about the stem cells. Thank you.